Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church and School. We are a church founded on God's Word and the Great Commission to proclaim Christ to a world in need of God's grace. We honor God with our worship and build supporting relationships through fellowship in Christ. From our loving and caring church family, we reach out with the gospel message to the world and the community around us. We teach discipleship and minister with compassion, care, and service to those in need. Lives are transformed by God through grace. When we look back, we can see that God greatly blessed our congregation in the past. Founded in 1932, in the middle of the Great Depression, Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church has a heritage of growth through the faith and sacrifice of its members. Just all the different aspects that we have here, focusing on really Christ as our center, that really is what makes things grow here. One of the great things about Grace uh, is that the church and school reaches out to the community. We are not looking at ways only to serve our existing members, but always certainly wanting to reach new people. The legacy of land and facilities we currently enjoy is the gift of sacrifice by our Grace family in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. These faithful men and women had a vision to expand so they could provide more opportunities for meaningful relationships with the community. We today represent the fruits of their sacrifice and hard work. God continues to extend His blessings to us today. By the Holy Spirit working through us, our Grace family has grown to care for approximately 3,000 people. As new members are invited and welcomed into our family, they are coming to Christ. We now have an average of 950 worshiping on weekends. Our school has reached an incredible student enrollment of over 245. It's seen as something that is sort of a, a beacon in this community as a quality place for education. I like going to school at Grace because I like learning about Jesus. He's a person who came to earth to die on the cross to take away our sins. With success comes growth. Our church attendance exceeds capacity during many Sunday and holiday services. As more and more families in our community have discovered the opportunities at Grace, we've seen a sharp increase in the numbers of children in our school and in our ministries. We praise God that He has blessed the vision of the generation before us, but now a new vision is needed. We have been having uh, people come to worship seeing that the facility is filled and going away. And that's of great concern to us. We are forced to have people exit the facilities and leave the parking as quickly as possible so that other people can come in and enjoy services after them. I went to school here and, since pre-kindergarten and it has essentially stayed the same. They've worked around expanding enrollment and have had to do some creative things. I'm teaching full day 5K on one side of the classroom and another teacher is teaching two sessions of 4K. During the day we can constantly hear each other reading books, singing songs, teaching lessons. Sometimes when we're doing, like if we're doing hard work, we have to, we're like walking around the classroom and it's very crowded. There's lots of stuff. There are over 100,000 people in our area. Over a third of them, 39%, do not have a church home. But how do we invite the community into a church with no room? The fact remains that our ministries are competing with each other for space and resources. Our buildings are in need of expensive maintenance and updating. Disabled members and guests find our facilities are not suited to their needs. We had to create a makeshift air conditioning system, which required the removal of special stained glass gifted by donors a roof fire, our deteriorated wiring, a finicky boiler system, the flooded classrooms, and the carbon monoxide evacuation during a Saturday service. All painful wake-up calls to the condition of our buildings. It's difficult to predict and budget for the upkeep and optimization of an aging facility. Two times out of my three years of teaching here, this current classroom has flooded. Toys ruined and carpets ruined and supplies ruined. 
I mean, it costs probably $3 million just to bring this facility up to code, and we wouldn't have another seat here to, to bring more people into this facility. Uh, we can uh, build onto the church, but we have no place to build onto the school. We can build onto the school, uh, but that limits what we can do with the church. And in both scenarios, we still have the parking problem. The Holy Spirit is leading us with a new plan, a new campus, and a new foundation that will serve our grace ministry for years to come. We have a plan to move the congregation to our 80-acre property on Highway Q. If the plan is approved by vote of the congregation, we will build a family ministry center, a multi-use community worship facility, classrooms for science, art, computers, and music, plus a new child development center for younger children. God opened that door uh, at a time when we were not looking. And that to me is very special. It would be great to be able to plan from the ground up essentially. We will be able to add a true science lab, a true art room, and I think we will have room to have double classrooms if needed, and all areas of learning will be able to be expanded. When we move to the new land, not only today's um, members will benefit, but certainly future generations will benefit. It gives us that ability to go and try to reach those people with the love and grace of Jesus Christ. It's also our prayer that we will have a senior living complex on our land that will complement our ministry. We want to see a development on that 80 acres that will see all of the land devoted to our purposes in ministry. We're going to be reinvigorated. We're going to be more excited about the ministry than we've ever been here at Grace. And because of that, I think we're going to be sharing our faith with one another and with this community more than we ever have. The final relocation costs are estimated to be at approximately $18 million. But the relocation is carefully divided into a step-by-step -step sequence of events built around the vote to proceed. The funds for continuing the land purchase are already in place, thanks to the generosity of our congregation in recent years. Additional funds will come from the sale of our existing campus, development of portions of our new campus, and the securing of a mortgage. We are now in a position where we can advance to the next step by launching a capital stewardship campaign that will gather $2 million, generously given by the people of God at Grace. The present campaign uh, has been uh, in the planning for quite some time. We knew that we would have to have additional resources uh, so that it could take place. A lot of contemplation went into that. I think this is one that can be just embraced because it is so exciting. I think when I first heard about going to a capital campaign again and finally moving out to the land and doing this, my first reaction was, oh no. We can't do this now, it's, it's just not the right time. And then I looked at that, the campaign, and looked at the various things that were coming into place. And when God puts things together, He puts it together in His way and in His time. We just in faith reach out and say, well, it's gonna happen again. Uh, we'll just uh, give this amount and we'll be blessed. And, and so far it's proved true and we think it'll prove true in the future too. For me personally, as I think about what I will do for uh, and what pledge I will make for the capital campaign, it's about making choices and what's important. That it's really all about God and what He is going to do. We believe that through this move, we are better able to extend our Lord and Savior's reach. His work is not a building yes. and it's not a place. It's much bigger than that. And we can't tie ourselves down to one place and one location. It's We've got to be willing to expand. God was the same in that little church as He is right here. And He will continue to be the same wherever we go. Jesus is the one who died on the cross and saved our sins and fed 5,000 people. Extending His love. Extending His grace. Extending His teaching. Extending His forgiveness. Extending His reach.